<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and want to give you a quick video over something I am surprised that I would ever cover on the channel here. This here is the PlayStation 3, otherwise known as the most reflective game console in the entire world. Now what I have in front of me right here is not a typical PlayStation 3. This right here is a PS3, which is a retail system. It is precisely a CECH P01 model. So unfortunately, that means that it is not backwards compatible. So we cannot play any PS2 games on here through normal means. However, this one I decided to pick up because even though it's just a retail system which is not in the best of shape, it does have a nice history behind it. Right here, this is one of the pieces of the Condor Cluster, otherwise known as the Condor Supercomputer. Now, I'm not going to claim to be a complete expert on this subject here, but I will have a few links down below in the description with references and a few news articles where you can read up further on the Condor Cluster. So for anyone that does not know, the Condor Supercomputer was a supercomputer cluster created by the United States Air Force that was supposed to help out with enhancing the quality of image processing available to both the Air Force and the Air National Guard. Now, this was made up of 1,716 PlayStation 3 consoles. Now, this project originally started in 2009 and was originally made up of eight PlayStation 3 consoles. And just as time went on and as it seemed to be successful, they ended up getting more and more to the point where they maxed out at 1,716 PlayStation 3 consoles making up this cluster. Now, these were not all just running the stock official firmware. These were all running Linux, a a custom variant of Linux specific to them, and it was all running through the other OS feature, a feature which unfortunately was removed by Sony in the firmware 3.21 update. So the facts are there that there was this supercomputer cluster created using PlayStation 3 systems, which, you know, totaled up to 1,716 at a time. They were all put together using other OS, and we were able to get what we have here. At one point, it was in the top 40 most powerful supercomputers in the world. Now, there is a rumor to this as well, too. There's been a rumor circulating in the PlayStation 3 scene for a while that the reason why Condor was taken offline is because these systems had auto-updated or somebody had updated them to 3.21 or higher, which effectively removed other OS, which then made the Condor cluster useless. Unfortunately, there's not a solid source that you can go on for this information. The most that you can really find are news reports of the cluster coming online and people talking about it, as well as comments about other OS. You see, when that was announced, there were some people close to the project who had said that it was quite unfortunate because that meant that if any of their PS3s ended up breaking, if they sent them back to Sony, they would come back on the latest firmware, which did not have other OS. And if they went out to buy new PS3s, they would be on a firmware higher than 3.2, meaning that they had other OS removed from them. But right here, Let's take a look at what we have. I kind of just wanted to give you all the rundown. And again, I'm going to have some links down below in the description if you want to read up on it further. So there are a few stickers that you can see right here. And I ended up, you know, kind of just putting some sticky notes over these because I didn't know what information would be good to get out there and which ones wouldn't. Technically, you can say because these have been sold to the public and have been put out there, it should be okay, but better to be safe than sorry. So right here, you have one of these white stickers, which says CPU, PlayStation 3, Linux, Workstation, and I believe that is P05. It has a cage number, a PN number, and the serial number is just the serial number for the console itself, which can be found around the back on every single PlayStation 3. Many of these also had this sticker right here, or not sticker, but just some tape which mine has a 4-22 on it. Now, I don't particularly know what this means, but we ended up using this, myself and some people in my Discord and others that I've talked to, we use this as evidence to show that these were indeed part of the cluster. Not only we had found photos of this sticker right here, but also shout out to Woody from my Discord. He ended up finding another article which had 
a photo of several PS3s and you could see tape right here. So these are indeed the same ones. On top of that, there's also this giant sticker up at the top right here. Now the sticker will look something like this where there is a certification of hard drive disposal because technically the hard drives on these systems did contain confidential information on them. So they could not be sold with the consoles, but it shows the manufacturer, the serial number of the console, a DTID number, which mine was not filled out, a certifying official, which I can only assume is the person who allowed these to, well, allowed the hard drives to be pulled and destroyed, a office number, well, office serial phone, that was kind of just an extension, the, no the model number, of course, being PlayStation 3, not being a CECH P01, IPMS number, that was filled out. I looked it up a little bit and it seemed to just be a number that I figured, you know what, let's just cover it anyways. Barcode number, which mine was blank. A signature, which funny enough, I have a couple of these. One of them will be for me and another is going to be for a friend. And the other one has a signature on it. This one does not. But the certification date is the same on the both of them, which is March 17th, 2016. So this means that this system was technically decommissioned about three years ago. It says right here, no hard drive or hard drive removed, and same for the second one. I mean, there really wasn't anything there. It was just going to be one hard drive, but I digress. Now with these containing such sensitive information on them, it's understandable that the hard drives were removed. So right here, thankfully it does have the hard drive flap on it. Unfortunately though, they even took the caddy. So you could either just slap the hard drive in, or if you want it to be secure, you're gonna to have to bring your own screws and caddy and all that. But this system, was never opened up, so that's at least nice. I will say, despite the outside of these consoles being in quite rough shape, I mean, you could see all the scuffs, the scratches, the dust all over the place, I kind of took a peek on the inside. And when looking on the inside, I mean, there's really no dust or dirt or grime buildup, thankfully, so. The inside seems to be good enough. I mean, I will probably recommend cleaning these up, you know, putting on new thermal paste and such if you're going to be using them. Uh, but thankfully, this didn't come out of a nasty household or anything. It seems like the Air Force took quite good care of them. Now, the way this came into my possession really wasn't anything super secretive. I believe it was Junie, shout out to them, who had posted up on Twitter one day that these PS3s from the Condor supercomputer cluster end up going for up on sale on eBay. This is not the first time they were being sold. Uh, from what I believe was in the listing, it had said that this person had purchased this in a surplus sale and then just ended up reselling them. And they were just selling these as is. Originally, when I saw them, they were selling for $56 with free shipping. So again, I end up getting a couple of them, one for myself, one for a friend of mine, and they end up coming back online later on. I believe it was a few days later, the same seller was selling them for $70 with free shipping. At this point when the video comes out, I really doubt that there's going to be any in stock because they did go quite quickly. But I do have this hooked up. It is working so far. And one thing I'd like to do before we end this video is I'd like to see if I can dispel that long-standing rumor of these consoles being updated to 3.21. Let's check this out. So this thing just kind of sounds like an old truck trying to chug along, but saying right here, cannot start the correct hard disk was not found because there's no hard disk in there. So let's go ahead and grab a hard drive, slot it in and see what firmware version it reports back. All right, so check it out. One nice thing is since you can just put any old laptop hard drive in there, I just slotted one in. Let's go ahead, fire this machine up. And yeah, that is, Definitely louder than the PS3 should be when it's coming on, but let's see. Is it doing anything? No. All right, well, I got a controller hooked up, so let's do this and check this out. It is looking for 2.52 or later, meaning that this console currently has firmware 2.52 on it. Another thing I'd also like to do is check the second console I have. So let's do the exact same thing, hook that up and see if it works. All right, so here's my other console. It has another sticker on top of this, which eh, I figured I'll cover up on here. Um, but this one has a 2-20 on it, which I can only assume would be the location of it on the racks. So again, we have this one fired up. Let's press the PlayStation button. And oh, this is interesting, all right. 
2.52. This one I noticed when I did the same reset, it ended up going through the whole process of wanting to go into safe mode. So both of these consoles are on 2.52. All right, so back over on the original PS3 I was showing you all, we're back at this screen. Let me connect that up. All right, and I do have a flash drive with firmware 2.52 on this. So it's just going to check it right now and then Let's get this installed. In the middle of this, my dog Lily decided to come over and sniff the PS3 I had on the ground. She she only sniffed it for a few seconds, but she knew something was going on with this. She, she knows it's special, somehow. All right, so we have the hard drive formatted and now it's just transferring over the update. Let's check on this in a few minutes. All right, so the update just finished installing. Let's see, we should be on 2.52. Oh, all right. Cool. So let's go ahead, go through the initialization process, and set this all up. Oh man. I, I truly missed that, uh, that intro. Now check this out. Yeah, this is, my goodness, this is an old firmware. Alright. So yeah, everything seems to be working on this so far. Let's check for one other thing. I don't remember where it is, but I'm trying to find where other OS is, just so I can show that to you all. I'm not gonna be running anything through other OS, but I just wanna make sure it shows up here on the XMB. And there we go. Check it out, you all. Install other OS. This is the feature that made everything possible, that made this thing into part of a supercomputer. <laughs> That's awesome. The last thing I want to try out here, just to make sure that this does indeed work, is I'm going to fire up a game. So, pretty much grabbed one of the oldest PS3 games I have in my collection to ensure that it's not going to update the system. And let's fire this up to make sure that it's a properly working retail unit. Alright. Loaded up just fine. You know, I'd be surprised this might be one of the first times this console's ever played a game. Heavenly Sword popped up. And there we go. All right, cool. So this system completely works. That is awesome. I haven't connected it to my network or anything yet, but that is fantastic. So I'll go ahead and close out of here for now. So owning a piece of PlayStation 3 history here. At the end of the day, this is still just a standard retail unit. Again, it's a CEC HP01, so it's not like you're getting a test kit or a dev kit or really any piece of internal hardware. This is just a standard retail CEC HP01 model that anyone could have picked up at a store at a time. But really, the appeal to this comes down to the stickers on it that tell the story and knowing where this came from and what it was used for. That's the thing that makes this system a nice little centerpiece and a cool collector's item. Plus, in all honesty, for $56, I think it's, you know, cool to keep around, have on display, and tell the story of it. Um, again, just a really cool centerpiece. But if you're also wanting to pick one of these up as a retail system and, I don't know, actually use a thing and play some games on it, uh, these do indeed work. I would just recommend open it up, repaste it, get it nice and clean, and you have yourself a nice, cheap PS3. Is this the best deal that you can get on a PS3? No, you, you can get them out for, for cheaper, for sure. You can get better PS3s, like you can get yourself a slim. But again, for $56, just knowing exactly where this came from, not only that, but having the stickers that do tell the story on here, I think this is pretty cool. So if one of these crops up and it's a fair price, I'd recommend picking one of these up, whether you want to play around with it or keep it in your collection just for display purposes. But if you're thinking of making this your main PS3, again, clean it up or maybe pick up another one if you find a good deal on one, because I'm not sure how long these ones have, because I know they were definitely used and abused. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.